Brethren, as we feed our body with its daily necessary nourishment, let us also feed our souls regularly with the Word of God. Come, let us partake of the food for our souls. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are in Cycle A. Once again, I invite you to join me in reading, reflecting, and praying over the Gospel this Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, If it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, our Gospel this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Cycle A, as I have mentioned, is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew. We are in chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Now, of course, at the very first line of the Gospel of St. Matthew, he tells us that after Jesus had fed the people. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, that should remind us of the context of our Gospel today. And of course, we know that our Gospel today is a continuation of the Gospel last Sunday. Remember the Gospel last Sunday? It was the time when Jesus fed the crowds. How many people were there? There were, St. Matthew would tell us, 5,000 men, not counting women and children. That's why normally I would say that conservatively, there must have been at least 10,000 people during that time. And yet Jesus fed all of them. From how many loaves of bread? Five loaves of bread and two fish. And when Jesus, of course, raised up the five loaves of bread and two fish, and giving thanks to the Father, blessed it, and distributed the loaves of bread and the two fish, after everybody has eaten, how many were the left over? They said they were able to gather 12 wicker baskets. That's the context of a story today. That's why St. Matthew would tell us, after he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side. Now, that's a little strange, surprising. Why is that strange? <clears throat> because in our Gospel it says, Jesus told his disciples to get into a boat. It's strange because, of course, they're always together. Why is it that this time, only the disciples will get into the boat and cross to the other side? Well, again, my dear brothers and sisters, go back to the big, bigger context of the story, which I told you last Sunday, right? The context of the story, Jesus just heard the death of John the Baptist. That's why he wanted to be alone, because John the Baptist is somebody close to him, John the Baptist is a relative. Others would say he, they were cousins. And not only that, John the Baptist prepared the way for the Lord. So upon hearing the news of the death of John the Baptist, Jesus just wanted to be alone. Unfortunately, as we have heard last Sunday, the crowds followed him to that deserted place. That's why Jesus had to feed them. 
That's why in our gospel today, after he had fed them, now Jesus still wanting to be alone, he told his disciples to get into the boat and proceed to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And one thing very beautiful, beautiful in our story today, something that we can really emphasize. And what is that? St. Matthew would tell us, and after doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Beautiful. And I would always tell my friends, in my reflections, I would always tell them, if we're able only to imitate this attitude of Jesus about prayer and the, in the important events in his life, that every time that he has to make a big decision, every time that we're, he is faced with something, a big challenge, or he has to do something really great, he always spends time in prayer. But anyway, that's why in our, in our gospel today, Jesus wanting to be alone, feeling sad with the death of John the Baptist, and preparing himself for his mission, went up the mountain to pray. Of course, my dear brothers and sisters, we must bear in mind that in the scriptures, the mountain is always considered as a place of encounter between God and man. Well, because of course of its solitude and of peace and quiet. And not only that, the feeling of you're already close to heaven. Because of course it's a high place, almost, you can almost reach heaven. That's why mountains are always generally considered in the scriptures as a place of encounter between God and man. And in our gospel today, when Jesus wanted to pray, he went up the mountain. And it said, when it was, already, when it was evening, he was there alone. Again, the atmosphere of being alone in prayer of Jesus. Meanwhile, the boat already a few miles offshore was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. My dear brothers and sisters, you know this particular sentence in our gospel today should ring a bell to all of us, all of us who try our best to obey the will of the Lord. And what is that? Now I ask you, where are the disciples at this point? They were in the middle of the sea. And while they are in the middle of the sea, there were big waves. And what's the reason why there were big waves? Because there was strong wind. And the wind was against them. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, as I said, this should ring a bell to all of us who try, try our best to always obey the will of the Lord, to follow His command. Why? Well, the disciples were in the middle of the sea. They were being tossed by the waves and the wind was against them because Jesus told them to get into the boat and cross to the other side. What do I mean by that? My dear brothers and sisters, at the moment we obey the will of the Lord, as I always tell my friends, the evil one strikes. At the moment we want to start to be good, the evil one strikes. Have you ever experienced this when you said, oh, from now on, I will begin to do this. Every Sunday, I will already go to Mass Father. And next Sunday, somebody comes and invites you to go to a party or somewhere. At the moment you want to start to be good, the evil one strikes. No wonder in our gospel today, because it was the command of the Lord for the disciples to get into the boat and cross to the other side. They followed the will of the Lord. In fact, I would say that at that point, the disciples could have said it was already evening. They could have said, Lord, it's already evening. Can we leave tomorrow early morning? It's safer to travel by sea. But no, they followed the will of the Lord. They followed the command of the Lord. No wonder the wind was against them. No wonder the waves were big. And yet, my dear brothers and sisters, one beautiful another thing in our story today is this. What happened? During the fourth watch of the night, what do you mean by fourth watch of the night? Well, of course, for us, we divide the night by the hours, right? Six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. But for them, they divide the night by what they call as watch. And every watch is an interval of three hours. So the first watch of the night is at 6 p.m., six o'clock in the evening. So interval of three hours. What's the next watch? The second watch? 9 p.m. What's the third watch? Midnight, 12 midnight. What's the fourth watch of the night? Three o'clock in the morning. That's why the Gospel of St. Matthew, when it says, during the fourth watch of the night, that it means at three o'clock in the morning. Can you imagine the disciples in the middle of the sea? 
at 3 o'clock in the morning, there were big waves and strong wind. In our life, the waves will really be big. And yet, my dear brothers and sisters, he says, Jesus came toward them on the sea. My dear brothers and sisters, I know that it is not very clear in our gospel and it's not specifically mentioned by the gospel of St. Matthew, but I would believe that as Jesus was going down the mountain, he could see his disciples in the middle of the sea and they were in trouble. No wonder Jesus walked over the water towards them. What does that tell us? My dear brothers and sisters, that when we follow the will of the Lord, yes, there will be strong wind, yes, there will be big waves, and yet there's nothing to worry. Why? Because at the moment we follow the will of the Lord, and when the waves become big, the wind become against us, goes against us, the Lord will walk over the water for you. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I have mentioned a while ago that the mountain is a place of encounter between God and man. Well, in the scriptures, the sea, or for that matter, any body of water is considered to be the house of the evil one. Now, for Jesus to walk on the water is a powerful image, is a powerful picture telling us that Jesus has the power over the evil one. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, do you normally enter the territory of your enemy? Normally, you don't. And yet, Jesus, because he saw his disciples in the middle of the sea, and they were in great danger, that's why Jesus walked over the water for them. Jesus walked over the water for them. I said, of course, from the image, from the message of Jesus having power over the evil one. And yet, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. What do you expect? It's a very human and natural reaction of the disciples. Imagine yourself. I don't know if you have ever experienced it, being in the sea, on a boat. Don't think of a boat like a ship in our Gospel this Sunday. Remember, they don't have that. They're like small boats. Okay? You are at 3 o'clock in the morning in the middle of the sea. There was storm, big waves, and strong wind against you. Can you imagine how scared you would be in that kind of situation? And add to that, my dear brothers and sisters, all of a sudden, you see somebody walking on the water? <laughs> Will you be happy? Will you be saying, whoa, somebody's walking on the water? I'm sure you're already afraid of the situation. And you see somebody walking on the water, all the more you will be scared. No wonder in our gospel today, the reaction of the disciples, it is a ghost. And St. Matthew would tell us, and they cried out in fear. <laughs> they cried out in fear. And yet the beautiful part, another beautiful part of the story, and what is that? At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. You know, that's striking for me. It is I. Why did Jesus not say, take courage, do not be afraid. It is Jesus. Remember, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It must have been dark. They, did not, they could not see the face of Jesus. Why did Jesus not say, it is Jesus? Why does he have to say, it is I? Well, my dear brothers and sisters, because, of course, we know that because of the close relationship between Jesus and his the disciples, by just saying, it is I, he knows that the disciples would know it refers to himself, to Jesus. I remember when I was still very young, well, I was uh, in, in the seminary, okay? We have a game because the seminary, when I was in high school, the ground floor is uh, the classrooms, Okay? And the second floor are the rooms of our, our teachers, the priests. And the, the flooring of the second floor is made of wood. And I remember one of the games that we play among us students, among us seminarians, is this. When we hear somebody walking on the second floor, we look at each other and say, Who's that priest? <laughs> Who's that priest? Normally, the seniors, the juniors, could automatically detect or say, who's that priest? Because they have been there for three, four years. They practically know the priest already, even though they don't see the priest, by the kind of walking, the way of he walks, the steps and everything, they can immediately say, oh, that's the priest. If you're new in the seminary, it takes time. 
Okay, it takes time for you to be able to know who that priest is. No wonder in our gospel today, all that Jesus said is, take courage, it is I. The intimate relationship of Jesus and his disciples, that by Jesus saying, it is I, Jesus expects that the disciple would realize it is Jesus. And yet, my dear brothers and sisters, of course, somebody reacted among the twelve. And whom do we expect to react? Than Peter himself. Because knowing the personality of Peter, we all know that he's a very impulsive person. He reacts to everything, any event, without even thinking. And so, which is a good sign also for Peter to react in our gospel today because he's the leader of the group. In times like that, the leader should show real leadership. That's why when, he's, when Jesus said, It is I, take courage, do not be afraid. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you, to come to you on the water. Now I ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, was Peter able to walk on the water? You know, sometimes it's very sad that m- most of the times when I ask people, was Peter able to walk? They automatically say, they sunk father. he sunk father. All that they remember is Peter sinking. And they forgot the more important part of it. And what is that? That when Jesus said, come, St. Matthew would tell us that Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, before we even remember and think of Peter sinking off the, in the water, let us first of all bear in mind that Peter was able to walk on the water. Why do we have to underline that? Well, as I have mentioned a while ago, the water, if the mountain is the, house, is the encounter, is a place of encounter between God and man, how about the sea? What is it again? The sea is the house of the evil one. Therefore, Peter being able to walk on the water shows us that just like Jesus, we can also walk over the water. That we have also the power over the evil one. It is not right to just say, Oh, Father, I'm just a human being. When a temptation comes, I give in easily. I'm weak. No. Because come to think of it, when God created man, sin is not part of it. He did not create man to commit sin. In fact, when man was created, he was created to do good. No wonder Peter in our gospel today, when Jesus said, Come, walk toward me. St. Matthew would tell us, Peter got out of the boat, of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But the big difference is this, between Jesus and us. Jesus walked on the water because he is the Son of the Father, he is the Son of God, he is the Messiah, he is the Savior. By his power, he can walk on the water. He has power over the evil one. He is God. How about us? How come Peter was able to walk? I would say, there are two conditions of it. I would rather say, there are two conditions. And what is that? First of all, it is the command of the Lord. That means it is his will. Jesus said, Peter, come, walk on the water. But because, and since it is the will of the Lord, it is the command of the Lord to Peter, he was able to walk on the water. My dear friends, don't ever dare walk on the water if it is not the will of the Lord. You'll definitely sink. <laughs> don't ever do that. Sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, we enjoy walking on the house of the evil one. Ah, oh, we already know there will be a lot of temptations. We intentionally go there. <laughs> we intentionally go. Okay? We intentionally go to places, go to times that we know we will be put in a great temptation. Don't ever walk on the water if it is not the will of the Lord. We can only walk on the, on the water, the first condition, if it is the command of the Lord. It is the will of the Lord. And secondly, my dear brothers and sisters, if we are focused on the Lord. I can imagine Peter going out of the boat because the request was, come, command me to come to you on the water. Have you realized? Peter could have said, Lord, if it is really you, can you make me walk around the water? <laughs> right? 
<laughs> then he could have just got out of the water, uh, out of the boat, and strolled on the water. <laughs> no. But it was very specific. Let me walk on the water to come toward you. That's why I can imagine Peter obeying the command of the Lord. Come, Peter, and looking at the Lord. Focused on the Lord. My dear friends, we can walk on the water, on the house of the evil one, if it is the will of the Lord, and we are focused on the Lord. Unfortunately, the next line tells us, but when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. I can imagine Peter, as I said, going out of the boat, walking towards the Lord, focused on the Lord. He was able to walk. And all of a sudden, he remembered, wait a minute. I forgot that the wind is strong, that there are big waves. Now he lost his focus on the Lord. Where is he focused now? On the wind and the waves. My dear brothers and sisters, wherever we focus, that will be our situation. The moments we say, oh, Father, I am a hopeless case already. I have so many problems, Father. I have so many sins. I have committed a lot of evil things. Then if you focus on those things, you really sink. That will really be your situation. The Lord would say, where your treasure is, there will your heart be. If you are, your treasure is like giving attention, value, to the problems in life, to the difficulties in life, then it will consume you. Right? Rather be focused on the Lord. And yet another beautiful thing in the story. And what is that? After Peter losing focus of Jesus and now looking at the waves and the wind and realizing that, oh, wow, the wind after all is very strong and the waves are big. St. Matthew would tell us, and Peter beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. If you're the Lord, how would you react? You might be saying, Peter, that's your problem. I told you, walk on the water and walk towards me. And now, you are more concerned about the waves and the wind. But no. Beautiful, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, he says, immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter. You know, it amazes me that St. Matthew would even put the word immediately. He could have just said, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter. But no. St. Matthew specifically said, immediately. My dear brothers and sisters, no matter how many times sometimes we lose focus of the Lord, how many times we gave into looking at other focuses in our life, away from the Lord, as soon as we remember we're sinking, we realize we're sinking, Lord, save me. And the Gospel of St. Matthew would tell us, immediately, Jesus stretched out the sand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? My dear brothers and sisters, if we are overwhelmed more of our problems and concerns in life than being overwhelmed with our faith in the Lord, that's a lack of faith. We must rather put our trust on the Lord than be afraid of the wind and the waves in our life. And the most beautiful part of the story, I love this. And what is that? It said, after they got into the boat, the wind died down. Now I ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, what do you think? Did the wind really die down? Well, obviously, of course, he is the Son of God. He is the Messiah, the Savior. If he says, wind, stop. Waves, stop. Definitely they will. Because he's the Lord. He can command them. But, you know, an experience of mine changed a little of my reflection on the gospel story. And what is that? I remember I was still a very young priest. I was only five years a priest. I was assigned in this remote island. And to go to that island, you have to take a small plane, nine-seater plane, okay? And mind you, all planes, okay? And I remember I I was in in Manila during that time, and I have to go back to the island for a very important meeting. And so, there was typhoon. And that morning, I was telling myself, shall I take the plane with this kind of weather? The whole night, it was raining hard. 
the flight was at 7 o'clock in the morning. I went early to the airport telling myself, if the weather looks okay, I will take the flight. But if not, no. It was 7, it was boarding time, it was only drizzling. There was no wind. And so I said, no, I can take this. Went out of 19 passengers, only 7 of us took the flight. Believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, no exaggeration. After we took off for about five minutes, zero visibility, heavy rains, wind going left and right, up and down, the worst flight ever in my life. I was so scared, I tell you. Okay? Who would not be in this kind of situation? And so for the flight was supposedly for one hour, and I was telling myself, I am still young. I could still do a lot of things, Lord. So I was going against the situation, going against the situation. Oh, this could not happen and everything like that. And you know, I have high blood pressure problems, concerns. And I could already feel here at the back. I believe those who have hypertension, those who have high blood pressure problems, could relate to what I'm talking about. When I was already feeling it up here, I was telling myself, I'm going to die in this flight, not because of the crash, but because of my high blood pressure. And I remember, oh, the Lord. And I told myself, He's the Lord. He knows best. He has the best plan for all of us. Whatever is the plan of the Lord for me, I have to entrust myself. And so I started asking for forgiveness, of course, for the sins that I have committed, and entrusted myself to Him, saying, Lord, you know best what is best for me. You know, what is your plan for me? Then I, your will be done. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, after doing that, everything died down for me. Everything was calm. Now, does that mean that the weather changed? It did not. But I just felt calm. Why? Because the Lord is already in me. Because come to think of it, my dear brothers and sisters, I ask you, was there any moment in your life that there was no wind, that there were no waves? Definitely. When we follow the will of the Lord, there will always be big waves and the wind will always be against us. But if the Lord is in our boat, in our life, everything will just be calm. Because there is nothing to worry. You know, it amazes me back in my province when I was, again, very young. When in the, at night, it's watching TV, and all of a sudden, there will be power outage. I don't know if you have that experience. What's the reaction of the, the kids, the little ones? Will cry, right? Will cry. Will shout, Mom! Right? But when mom holds your hand and says, Don't be afraid. I'm here. Notice, the power is not yet back. And yet, everything becomes calm because mom is here. My dear brothers and sisters, in the midst of the many waves and wind of our lives, we have nothing to worry. The Lord will walk over the water for you. And the Lord will be in you. Everything will be calm. Let us pray. God, our loving Father, we continue to praise and thank you for all the blessings you have given us. We thank you for keeping us safe in the midst of what we are experiencing right now in this pandemic. We beg you to continuously give us the health we, we need in order to continuously to serve you by serving one another. In our Gospel today, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, we are reminded that when we obey you, when we follow you, there will be a lot of waves and wind in our life. We pray, loving Father, for those people who are experiencing a lot of difficulties in their life. Give them hope, Lord. Make them feel your love for them by sending people who would help them in their time of need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. God bless all of you.
Thank you for partaking of this wonderful source of spiritual nourishment, the Word of God, the food for our souls. May the Almighty God and loving Father bless you.